Hello everyone, I'm Todd Kenrick. Today we are talking about the Monstrous Compendium Volume 1. That does imply there will be more volumes heading forward and there's going to be more content available uh, to anyone who has a D&D Beyond account as well as a Wizards account. And this is not going to be the only type of content that we'll be seeing this year. And I can't spoil everything, but let's just move on to the Monstrous Compendium. A lot of cool things are going to be happening. So. I'm with Carlo. Hey. You did a bunch of the art for this. Yep. Tell me a little bit about the Monstrous Compendium. Um, I get this note that said, hey, would you like to do um, some entries in the Monstrous Compendium, right? We're, we're trying to bring that back and it'll give you an opportunity to start uh, playing with the tabletop team. Immediately when they told me what it was for, Spelljammer, I went, yes. What exists in this in this area? You know, what exists in this world? And the, the first thing that I saw in my head were the illithid nautiloid ships. What can kill that? And then I thought, oh, what if there was a squadron of these flying wyvern shark-like creatures that had the ability to go stealth, ridden by Gith Yankees? Imagine these things decloaking in front of an illithid ship and taking that thing out. So, you know, being buoyed up by that fantasy, I spent the weekend just, you know, doing this painting. And we have this very classic cover to the Monstrous Compendium, Volume 1. We've got this Yidrasi, we've got the, we've got this Eldritch Lich, yeah, we've yeah. got the Goom Balloon. Yeah. It, it's so evocative of, like, the past, but so refreshed at the same time. Like, who was responsible for the cover? Well, first of all, um, let me say that the person that art directed this was, was Emmy. And she's, she's amazing. She's been doing great work um, uh, for this franchise for a long time. And so really, I, I, I had a great time taking a backseat and being one of the illustrators. Um, but she also used a, a great artist named Hinchel Orr uh, from the Philippines. And I'm from the Philippines too, so it was one of those things where it's like, yes. Um, it, and he did such a great job of being able to visualize these things and and really translated my designs uh, onto the cover in a way that I hadn't imagined before. Let's let's run through some of these monsters okay. because they're really cool and I'm really excited for these. Uh, the Asteroid Spider. Yes. This is another, this is an example of something we've talked about before of the art is telling a story. And when we're looking at the Asteroid Spider, we can actually see all the divots and the craters in its back. And you can tell that it looked like an asteroid, but it's opened up. Now all of its legs are wrapping them their way around a spell jammer. Right, right. Yeah. So, what what was fun about this monster? Well, um, when I approach a design assignment and thinking about the thing, uh, I try not to approach it like a problem solving situation because okay. a lot, you know, a lot of people will make the mistake of you know thinking in terms of problem solving instead of letting themselves dream about the situation. Right. So, a real designer isn't a problem solver. They're um, they're a, they're a dreamer, right? And then they figure out ways to execute on that dream. So in this case, I try to dream about the moment that the DM is trying to present to the players, right? Where they're going through an asteroid field and maybe they've dealt with other things already. And as they're passing through, one of those asteroids unfurls into this monstrous arthropod, right? With, with limbs that are reaching out 60 feet long and engulfing, um, your spell jammer. And that moment of threat, that moment of um, existential dread that comes out from an alien looking, you know, creepy spider thing is really the, the moment of emotion that I wanted to capture. Well, well, you did it. Thank you. <laughs> it's also terrifying because these things can wild, they can travel wild space, Ugh. just like a spell jammer. <laughs> We've got the clockwork horror, which is also terrifying for a lot of reasons. It does have two band saws on it. Right, um, and it's very industrial, but these things can also attune to your spell jamming helm mm -hmm. on top of everything else, and they want to create more of themselves. It's very terrifying. One of the things that I was thinking of when I first started reading the the stat block and and, and even the descriptions was that okay, what does a mechanical infestation look like, and what is it going to feel like, right? And creating these insectoid horrors that had both dangerous four parts and then these mandibles that could just mangle you. Um, the thought of someone being stuck in the, the helm, right? And, and sort of like, I'm controlling the ship, but this thing is coming after me. Um, 
having those visuals in my head were, was the way I was trying to approach this. And, and really just that, that little moment of seeing this trying to, you know, tear someone apart, um, you know, getting that emo emotion down was the, the most important thing. Also terrifying. That brings us to, to probably the worst of the worst. We've oh, got yeah. the Eldritch Lich. These are liches that have made a very particular deal, and there's been a give and take here. Tell me, tell me about this design. We've got a mouth in its stomach. We've got tentacles coming out of this thing. Right. Tell me, tell me about the backstory on this. Okay, so most liches lengthen their lives using spells and potions and other magical means in order to, um, you know, have these long existences where they can learn more knowledge. But what if you delved too deep fast and you found another way, a more galactic way, a more expansive way to do this knowledge? And that is to make a deal with an ancient evil that is not even humanoid, right? A tentacled horror from the depths of wild space, right? Or even astral space. Here comes the Eldritch Lich. And the Lich compromises their existence. That's the key thing about a lich, right? They've compromised in order to get power. And in this case, the compromise is body horror. <laughs> like a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, like there's, gonna, there's a lot of wonderful, um, beautiful, wild things out there, right? But there's also a sense of danger out there that really creates the contrast between the, 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 the wondrous stuff. And this is one of those dangerous things. So having a parasite that's embedded within the lich that directly um, speaks to an elder god is one of the things that I thought might be really cool visually. But as soon as I did it, the, the designers, and I believe this time it was, um, uh, it might have been Perkins, uh, the designers went, well, we need to put that in the stat block and, <laughs> and make sure that that, that has, uh, you know, game implications as well because this is so interesting. And that's that's always been true for D and D that like there's a there's a back and forth between art, especially like when it's concept art, and the design. One can inspire the other. There's like a back and forth, which has always been really cool. Uh, that that brings us to the the fracting, which I'm really impressed with the illustration of this because it has existed in Spelljammer lore beforehand. Yeah, yeah. But we have a beholder that is clearly trapped. Staring very angrily at uh, space space hamster. Yeah, uh, yeah. How what was the approach here? Well, uh, Hinchel and Emmy really did a great job with this one. Um, I think the core idea is that um, if you have this thing that's basically a dimensional mirror, right? Yeah. Like the Phantom Zone. Exactly. How do you create it such that it is threatening, right? And the best way to do that is to put something threatening that it has imprisoned. So it gives you a sense of scale. It, it actually tells you how powerful this thing is relative to the, the creatures around it or how it is a, an Achilles heel to um, certain powers. So being able to put that, that beholder in there allows us to really get you the context that you need for this, for this monster. Now we have something that's a little bit more utilitarian. We've got the guide about, and this has been around before as well, and this is like a conveyance for astral elves. That's right. It's a really beautiful design. Thank you. Uh, tell me about this. So um, originally the way it was described is it's this space plant that allows you to have a bubble around your face and you can also eat the leaves. So it's this um, self-sustaining enclosed um, you know, ecosystem that a player can use to, to get about, get about um, in, in Spelljammer. Now, my challenge was to create something that also felt aspirational. If you're doing a spacesuit, what does a spacesuit in a fantasy realm look and feel like? And then also, you know, it was an it was an opportunity to do a little bit more whimsy after doing a lot of the body horror. So <laughs> creating something that was um, both a, a, a symbiote, but also just a, a pretty flying flower was really fun to do. That does 
we, we're going to take a bit of a turn with the goon balloon. Yes. This has been around. It looks like a giant beach ball, essentially, with eyes. It uh, When it dies, it explodes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and has these very kind of scintillating eyes that can cause psychic damage. This is definitely this is definitely different than the cosmic horror. Right, right. We're leaning into a very different vibe here, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things that are happening, I think, at the same time with something like this. It has... Um, a little bit of the charm of kind of old school Ray Bradbury, um, you know, floating floating ball, pulling puff ball kind yeah. of alien. But at the same time, it also has the kind of comic relief that you need in combat. Um, you know, I'm sure all of our players and, and, and dungeon masters have had these situations where you've, you've pitted people against such overwhelming eldritch horror that you're like, oh, okay, well, I need a moment to... Right. <laughs> To have, you know, give the, give the guys a win on something that's funny. The Nightmare Beast is here. It is uh, terrifying. It has a terrifying roar. It is an apex predator. I love the art of this. It makes me scared immediately. Well, um, this, was a, this was a case where we wanted to create something that um, was a very classic science fiction monster. Um, not the kind of, you know, something that's a little closer to a Ray Harryhausen. Something that fits in... Um, in John Carter of Mars, you know, basically when I was thinking about it, uh, it reminded me of how one might have visualized the the nightmare creature from Forbidden Planet if it became physical. Um, and so, you know, there, there are visions of um, a Rancor monster running on all fours or, you know, basically a T-Rex bulldog. So, <laughs> it, you, know, you know, that's that's the sort of conversation where it's it's a little bit more fun, a little bit more aspirational. Yeah. And God bless anybody that ma manages to make it a mount. <laughs> yeah, and and so you know, it is gargantuan. This is a big beast. That's it right. is not like a tiny little pupper. This thing has come to scrap. Nope, it's here. It can tear up buildings and get to you if uh, if you try to escape it. The puppeteer parasite, I feel, doesn't need much explanation, but this is again like a very good example of art informing what sure. you should be terrified in this. We have a human surrounded by parasites. I, I get the impression they're not going to survive this. So um, Hinchel created this, uh, this illustration where you could clearly see the expression on the victim's face, and that really starts to set the tone of the piece. Um, the other thing is, uh, the creature itself looks like a Portuguese man, man of war, but instead of tentacles, you put a bunch of teeth, right? And, and nobody likes that. You can imagine that thing wrapping around the back of your neck or on your face, and it suddenly gets really visceral, right? You can, you can feel the illustration, and that's, I think that's the direction that they decided to go with with this one, and I, for one, applaud it. And, and you mentioned, you know, we talked about the horror of a member of the party suddenly turning on the party. Like, oh. that puppeteer aspect. Well, I mean... In a game where you fantasize about having to be able to make these, you know, meaningful decisions, right? Because it's called role play, not rule play, right? Yeah. Um, the worst piece of horror is to lose agency in a Dungeons and Dragons game, right? And especially if that loss leads to your character that you care about turning on your friends. So that's the scariest thing. Of all the monsters here, that situation's to me the scariest in terms of playing uh, the game itself. Yidrasti. This right. is like a sliver of Idrasil itself. Right. And, but is like this gargantuan plant that just yeah. kind of creates its own atmosphere. Tell me, tell me about this thing. The sense of scale of this thing is incredible because it's a splinter of the world tree. It's like having a splinter of our universe. It might even, you know, in the hands of creative people, have the potential to spawn its own universe because it's a splinter of the world tree. And so creating something that has uh, a, a dynamic sense to it, even though it's, it's a plant, was, was the challenge. And having um, clear sources of power in the illustration, making sure that we're displaying the, um, the kinetic nature of this thing was really what the, the illustrator was trying to go for. And you're seeing the electricity and you have 
someone in the background kind of giving it a sense of scale Absolutely. And, and there are like cracks in them and their eyes glowing inside of it like this is how immense this thing is yeah i mean if you're going out there to explore um fantasy space you're going to be facing challenges that you normally wouldn't face in your um run-of-the-mill kind of i'm getting rumors at the end situation you're right <laughs> yeah you know, like it, it's 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 all about away teams and red shirts. To be honest with you, <laughs> uh, Carlo, this is this is absolutely amazing, and I'm so thankful that like monstrous compendiums are coming back, and yes. that we will have more, and there will be a lot more additional content uh, as as we look ahead that we are not allowed to talk about right now. But the monstrous compendium volume one is available right now for those that have a D and D beyond account and a wizards account as well. And so you can pick up this really awesome, lots of monster stat blocks, fantastic art, great layout. And you, all you need is an account and that's it. That's right. And it's just a aspirational window to the sorts of things that we have planned for you guys in the future. And hopefully um, we'll be able to deliver some things that are exciting and will you know, really flavor your home games in a way that you haven't been able to do before.